I'm Eric Snodgrass, and thank you for watching today's Ag Forecast for South America, brought to you by Nutrient Ag Solutions. First, I apologize for some of the background noise. That's my furnace going, and for my early recordings, I turned it off, and the temperature of the house got down into the mid-50s. And my family's still upstairs and asleep, and I'd like to keep them warm, so I turned it back on. It's one degree Fahrenheit outside right now. But the map you've been looking at here is uh, the soybean production by state map for Brazil. And I want to show you some data here uh, collected by this satellite called MODIS on NDV. So let's start north and, and begin here in Mato Grosso, so right into this state. Now you notice that early in the season, October and November, we were at the very bottom of the normal uh, range of NDVI values. And remember, NDVI, Normalized Difference Vegetation Index, we're measuring red light and near-infrared light, looking at the difference. Uh, and that difference tells us how healthy the crop is. The higher those values, the more healthy it's going to appear. Now you notice that we were much below average here and then made a resurgence late December into January. And now as you look in January and February, one of the reasons why the values are so high compared to normal is partly because we would normally be harvesting a lot of this crop over the last three to four weeks. And therefore, there's quite a bit more green still there due to the lateness of the crop in Mato Grosso. Let's work our way right down here to, towards southern Brazil and let's head first to Mato Grosso do Sul. A very similar story. See the values in red that be 2020 into 2021 were much below average to start the season and they made a resurgence here and are now quite high for this time of year. A lot of this in southern Brazil here has been due to some recent rainfall. And you can really see that when I go to Paraná, which is right there. So lowest values almost on record down here. And then with all the rains that came in in December and in January and now in the beginning of February, the value is very high. So appearing to be very healthy from space. This is also a very green crop as viewed from space as well. But we should be harvesting this, right? Some of this, some of these soybeans, and we're we're delayed in that. And let's finish by going to Rio Grande do Sul, which is here, and it's a very similar story. Down in November and December, down you know well below average. But then look through December, January, and now into February, the values are much higher than normal. From there, let's go take a look at Argentina. We're going to start in Buenos Aires province down here. And you can see a similar story, December, January, much below average, but a sense with some good thunderstorm activity that has happened on some productive fields here. Uh, we've gotten back up toward average as we work our way through February. And then this is going to be the analysis for Cordoba, and this will be the last one I look at right in through this area here. And their values, again, through mid-February are now getting back here uh, above the average range. So what we saw can, I think, be summarized by looking at two maps. The one on the right shows us the last 30 days of precipitation. So this is D uh, January 13th through February 13th. Brazil's eastern and northern growing areas still below their climatological normals. Uh, but notice that you get to Mato Grosso do Sul, Paraná, Rio Grande do Sul. Some of the heavier rains as of late showing up here. Same thing as you get over toward Cordoba, Santa Fe. And even though you see drier conditions in Buenos Aires, there have been good thunderstorms that have rolled through this area, which is why the NDVI values look okay. Now I can show you this one last way, and over here on the right, we're going to put a slider that's going to run across. So the brighter the colors here, the healthier the crop looks uh, from space. Now this is for 2021, all right? Now do you see the lower values here corresponding to the drier conditions? But I want to tell you there's also a lot of cloud contamination in this as well, all right? So don't think that the crop is as bad as maybe some of the colors suggest. But let's go from 2020, excuse me, excuse me, 2021 to a year ago. And that's what things look like eager. So you can actually see some pockets in through here that look much better in 2021 than they did last year. And similar story down in parts of Argentina. Okay, with that as maybe our setup, let's take a look at where things are going here in the near term. It is certainly going to be very wet in Brazil's northern and eastern growing areas dry in Brazil's southern growing areas and in Argentina. In fact, it may be more instructive to see this map in terms of uh, departure from normal. So where the crop is being harvested here and the safrina crop going in, uh, it's quite wet. In some cases over the next week, an additional two to three inches of rainfall. But southern Brazil into Argentina, uh, quite dry over the next seven days with only scattered storms in this area. But during that time period, the models are not forecasting it to be hot. So it's going to be drier and cooler in this region. When does rain return to Argentina? Well, I had to look out here pretty far to 
for the next time that I see an actual low pressure system, this is the 23rd of February. Sandwiched between a high here and a high over there, there is a low that is forecast to go right here just off the coast of Buenos Aires uh, and, and Uruguay. And it could drag a front through some of the prime growing area here of Argentina. Uh, giving more consistent rains. But this is out here, this is a 204 hour forecast. So the likelihood of this showing up in this position could be well, relatively low. And that's why when I look out exclusively at week two, we continue to see the pattern that is wetter to the north and drier to the south, drier to the south. But again, I don't see the major heat stress down here, even though it is showing up drier in the models. So bigger picture things happening as we look out longer term. I, as I mentioned in, in my other forecast video this morning, the La Nina is kind of making a bit of a, just a brief comeback here. Some stronger trade winds in this area, as you can see in these blue colors here, showing that right here in the Central Pacific, we're really putting the nose of those stronger trade winds over toward Indonesia, Australia, you know, this region. And that's where our best rising motion is going to be uh, in, in the coming couple of weeks here. Now, when you think about that, what does that end up doing to South America this time of year? And it's not nearly as strong as the signal as it is in November, December, and January, where this would say much drier conditions here. But the MJO seems to want to collapse back into null space, and I don't have any strong signals. I think it might emerge over into phase four, five, and six, but I have no real strong signal to say that it will. So as I put this all together, I want you to see over here on the right a couple of things. The Antarctic Oscillation is going back to neutral. And so therefore it's being, even though it's dropping, it's, um, it's not a strong signal at this point. The Southern Oscillation Index, which would be an indicator of the strength of this La Nina, did drop to values of around 12 over the last month, uh, uh, down from 24, which is a strong La Nina. Uh, and we do see those resurging trade winds. So we'll have to see if the Southern Oscillation Index bounces a little bit here. But without a strong signal from the MJO uh, and these other features kind of in transition, I, I say predictability is low, but I want to point out that looking through the month of March, the models do favor drier conditions uh, in parts of Argentina. But to tell you what's going to happen in Brazil's north, I mean, the European has been consistent with better monsoonal rainfall, but it's kind of the only model that's been that way. So we'll watch this and kind of set this as our benchmark for the month moving forward. We'll keep you updated on how things progress here. I appreciate your attention. Have a good rest of your week. Thanks.